Welcome to another video from SQL Maestros. Today I'm going to talk about sargability and selectivity. In general, you should always try to write queries that are sargable and predicates that are sargable. The internet is flooded with a lot of examples on what exactly sargability means. It's a kind of a made up term from search argument ability, which is the ability uh, of the optimizer to seek within an index. And in most cases, it boils down to that exactly. Now, uh, we always tend to write sargable predicates and sargable queries, but it matters the most when your predicates are highly selective. This small example is going to show you that. And uh, along the way, we will also have a few learnings. So let's get started. We are using AdventureWorks 2016. Let's turn the, let's change the context there. We have a table here called transactions. Before I get deep into the demo, let's see how many records we have. So we have about 31 million records in this table transaction. And there is an attribute here called transaction date. Just for the purpose of demo, I try to figure out the min and maximum date values because I want to play, play with the selectivity factor. So the first date is from 2005 and the last date is from 2010. I'm going to use that later on. Let's turn on statistics time and IO so that we have a few metrics that are handy. Now come, let's come to the query itself. There are two versions of the same query, the non sargable version and the equivalent, which is sargable. So both are logically equivalent. The second one is sargable and what makes it sargable? Well, in non sargable, if you see on the left hand side of the operator, we are using the convert function on the attribute transaction date. And this is where it uh, will lose the sargability. The attribute is internally going to be treat, treated as an expression and the optimize, uh, optimizer will compare one expression with another expression. Please note that there is no index on transaction date as yet. So it may not matter much, but despite not having the index on transaction date, still there's, there are going to be a few differences that you will note between the non sargable and the sargable version. And the moment we create an index on transaction date, the one that we want for this query, then of course the difference is going to be more noticeable. The sargable version of the query is quite neat and clean. Uh, you can see we are not really doing any mathematics on the attribute, which is transaction date and both are logically equivalent. Let's turn on the actual execution plan or press control M and let's go and execute. Quick recap, we do not have the right index on transaction date. There is an index, but when I say the right uh, index, uh, I mean that the current index that is there, transaction date is not the leading column. So the optimizer may utilize some other index where transaction date could be part of that index. When both the workloads are running and you can observe that the number of rows now uh, here is about 14,000. Just keep that in mind. Let's jump over to the execution plan and you will see that the plans are identical uh, with just one minor difference that uh, first one, the first plan is showing you a warning symbol on the select operator. Otherwise the plans are identical. Well, it was expected that the plans will be identical, even though the first uh, query has a non sargable predicate in both the cases an index is being scanned and which index is being used. As I said, the other index, which is kind of not the right index, but this is the index where product ID is the leading column and probably transaction date is the second column. So that index is being scanned now to get the data. Observe that the optimizer thinks that both these plans are kind of equivalent in terms of performance. So we have uh, the performance difference of 49% versus 51%. And the moment you look at this, these two execution plans, one thing will immediately catch your attention that we are getting a missing index hint. Look at there. We are getting a missing index hint in the second one in the sargable version, but in the non sargable version, the missing index hint is not there. This is an interesting thing to know. So when you write these non sargable queries, or you have these queries with non sargable predicates, the optimizer is not producing missing index hints. So that's a good learning there. That's the first one. The second one, what catches my attention is even though 
we have index scan for both these queries, I see that the cost factor of index scan for the non sargable version is higher, at least three times or four times higher than the sargable version. And that's happening probably because we are using the convert function there in the first one. So of course, depending on why your workload is non sargable it may really transpire at the end of the day that there is some extra uh, uh, operation that is being performed by SQL Server. So a lot of CPU is being burnt out uh, you, uh, because the, you have applied some function on the attribute. Let's jump over to the messages tab and see uh, the metrics related to IO and CPU. The IO looks kind of similar in both the cases because of course we are scanning the same index in both these uh, queries. So we have 132K approximately is, uh, being used in uh, both of them. But CPU is where the differentiating factor is. And if I see that the elapsed time is of course more and why is that so because of the CPU factor. So about 30,000 milliseconds so about 30 second CPU cycles are being burned for the first one but for the second one it's relatively much lesser. Second learning excess CPU usage. So for the non sargable version you have the missing index hint missing then you have extra CPU being burned that really depends on what the T SQL code is all about. The third thing which is not really very evident in this query is cardinality estimation. Cardinality estimation may be affected. But what I can show you here right now is look at the cardinal factor. So we have uh, 14,000 rows being returned and estimation is about uh, 15,000. So this is 14,000 versus 15,000. Not very um, actually good, but not very noticeable. But the point is for the sargable version, the estimation is different. So sometimes, um, you may come up with scenarios where you will see that the non sargable uh, version of the query has a completely different cardinality estimation and that may further affect the query uh, qu uh, plan quality. Uh, in this particular case, it's not very evident, but keep that in mind. So that is the third one cardinality estimation. Now, let's go back to the workload and let's create an index on transaction date. So we're going to follow this recommendation. What recommendation? Okay, so we go to the execution plan. We have the index right click missing index details and SQL server missing index hint is advising us to create an index on transaction date and include a few columns. I'm not going to follow this recommendation exactly the way it is, but I'm going to create an index on transaction date, but not really include all of these columns. As you know, in most cases, missing index hints will always uh, recommend uh, you to create covering indexes. If we create covering indexes, the story becomes completely different. Uh, you can always try that later. Let's go ahead and create an index on transaction date now. After we create the index on transaction date, whatever I showed you is going to um, uh, make a lot more sense now because you are going to have the real good index that these queries need. Remember. The previous index that was being utilized where product ID was the leading column, but we are not searching on product ID. That's not part of our predicate. Uh, our predicate only has transaction date. So let's see and wait for a second or two. There you go. The index gets created. And now first thing we will do is run the same query again and just compare if you had observed in the previous execution plan, the plan quality difference was 51% versus 49%, which means of course, both the plans were kind of quite identical and uh, performance wise, uh, their quality wise, they were almost equivalent. What happens now? Now you have a non clustered index. So let's go and execute both the workloads. The first one is running now and we are fetching the same number of records, which is 14,000 and the second one runs a little more quickly, which was expected because now you have the right index in place. So let's go to the execution plan. Now you will see a different plan in place and that is expected because now we are seeking on this. Uh, let's, let's first talk about the non sargable version. Well, the non sargable version is exactly the same because the index is not being used uh, uh, and 
what is interesting to uh, to be noted here is that it does scan the index but it does not use the newly created index it actually uses the old index that was already there which is the product id and transaction date so the first query and the first plan which is the non sargable is exactly the same let's jump over to the sargable version and in the sargable version first thing you will observe is now the optimizer is seeking and it is seeking on the index that we created and this is the one that we created idx transaction date so we are seeking and then for the additional column that the query wants it is looking up on the base table that's the difference in the plan but then this demo has to be all about selectivity isn't it so here is the difference now let's talk about selectivity i'm not going to talk about missing index or cardinality estimation and uh, the second version of the query which is sargable and rightly so seek is happening and this is what you wanted and there is key lookup now let's talk about selectivity so we are fetching about 14000 records from this table which has about 31 million records so if you look at the selectivity the query is kind of highly selective the predicate is kind of highly selective observe how the plan performance has changed if you compare the metrics now this is 71% versus 29%. Remember earlier when both the plans were scan plans it was 51% versus 49 and now you are really looking at the right plan comparisons because the index does exist. Now what we are going to see is when the query and or the predicate when they uh, from being highly selective when they become less selective which means we will try to return more records you will see that sargability is not going to have a major impact which means this difference between the cost factor of both the plans is going to reduce as we increase the number of rows that are being returned by our predicate and that's what i mean by selectivity highly selective less number of records are going to be returned and low selective high number of records are going to be returned so this difference is 71% versus 29% keep this in mind and why not jump into the cost factor now so let's look at the cost factor uh, io is definitely going to make a lot of sense now because you're seeking so you're going to read less number of pages and look at this the first one still has about 132k uh, pages being read but the second one is just about 43k so that's that's uh, kind of a no brainer there look at the cpu time again so we have about uh, 30000 milliseconds here and wow look at this just 125 milliseconds huge difference of course because of because of the whole scan and seek comparison out there now comes the important factor about selectivity so i'm going to change the predicate a bit so instead of 2010 i am going to change the date to 1st jan 2005 this is going to return just kind of double the number of records so from 14000 we will jump over to approximately 25000 records so you can see we are making the query less selective and what impact does that have so if you look at the number of records now we are you can see in the status bar it is about 25000 records being written so well, this is a bit slow okay so there you go 25000 records being written let's jump over to the execution plan and now you can see look at the plan difference let's compare the plans now from a cost matrix 71% versus 29 was the earlier one now we have 59% versus 41% i want you to understand the fact that as we make the predicate low selective which means it's returning more records uh, you can see that sargability factor uh, the performance that we get out of sargability will reduce so if you see the difference between the plan performance here uh, and plan metrics will start reducing well this does not by any means mean that you should not write sargable queries but when you are comparing the performance of sargability uh, versus non sargable workloads keep the selectivity factor in mind there is a reason now why i was inclined to record this video because in a very recent customer engagement sargability did not make much sense to them because they were looking at workloads with predicates that were being low selective so the performance difference between the two plans the sargable version and non sargable version wasn't 
really very big. The, the gap wasn't really very big. But it is not always only about the estimated uh, plan cost because this is an estimation, remember. It is also import important that you look at actual runtime metrics. And that's why I always keep jumping over to the messages tab to see, uh, to look into the cost factor, which sometimes gets ignored. But now if you see, even though as the plan, uh, uh, the gap between the cost of two plans is reducing, but the CPU factor, which is like 29,000 milliseconds versus 218, that's always going to be a huge difference. So I hope you, you kind of getting this idea as to how selectivity is important when you're dealing with sargeability. So we changed from 2010 to 2005 and let's look at another version of this one. And, and this will be just the closing query. I ch changed the predicates a bit more. So what I'm trying to do now is from 25,000 records, I'm trying to get a few more and you will see what's happening. Let's go and execute this and you get the output and how many records are we trying to get with new predicate values there. So we get, we're getting uh, first Jan and uh, second Jan 2005 data. So we are getting about 50,000 records. So what we have done now, we have doubled up, so which means the query is even more low selective, which means returning more number of records. Okay. So we're jumping into the execution plan. What do you think is, will the performance, uh, the cost metrics reduce further uh, from 50 versus 40. Will it come down further? Let's go into the execution plan. Well, it is 50 50 now, but observe that the seek and the lookup is gone. Now both the plans are scan plans. And you might be wondering what is going on now, right? Where, where is the sargability thing completely gone here, right? Because we were seeking until just uh, before this query, and sargability was making a lot of sense. And suddenly now we see that based on the predicate value, both the plans are scanned now. So optimizer is certainly thinking about a few things here. So what's the answer? Well, if you're watching this video on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, why don't you put down some comments as to what do you think actually happened here with sargability and selectivity? And of course, uh, the decision that the optimizer has taken. If you're watching this on YouTube, put on uh, your comments on YouTube and I will try to reply there. Well, if you like the video, uh, do subscribe and uh, share it with your friends and colleagues. And uh, there are more videos uh, on SQL Maestros. Keep watching them. Visit sqlmaestros.com and you can become a free member and continue to watch a lot of videos that I keep recording all the time. We have events coming up each month, all free uh, for the community. There are some video courses and masterclasses as well. So take a look at them. I'm on Twitter, A underscore Bunsel, and SQL Maestros is at the rate SQL Maestros. Hope this video was useful and hope you learned something um, good. Uh, see you soon in another video. Goodbye.